Good morning, everybody. Today is the day I am finally going to build my ultimate dream system. This is going to be the culmination of a couple of years worth of fiddling around, and this is you know what I think is going to work for me. The build itself is going to be really easy, uh, really pretty straightforward, but I'm going to go step by step and show you every little piece along the way, every crimp, every wire, every screw, so you can just follow along. This video might be a little long. I'll try to put some timestamps down below, but I want you to see every piece and every decision that I make as I go along. Step one is choosing the battery and the voltage of your system. So if you're new here, I am a big fan of 24 volt systems. I think that they are the right blend for a small to medium size home system and uh, this is for backup purposes. And the reason why I say tw 24 over 12 is because you can use common components and get more power out of them. I have a longer video on 12 versus 24. The reason why I don't go to 48 over 24 is a lot of um, automotive things like RV refrigerators will run on 24 volts, uh, 12 or 24, but they won't run on 48. Um, and also the equipment is just kind of a little more expensive for 48. But the big reason why I don't recommend a 48 volt system for kind of a small to medium home backup is the minimum input voltage you have to have for most 48 volt systems is like 100 volts. So that means you have to have a minimum of four big residential panels just to kick it on. So I think 24 volts is kind of the right blend. Okay, so we're gonna do 24 volts. So what batteries am I using? I am using my watt cycle batteries. I'm gonna use the big boy. But this came up uh, in my first review video. What is the advantage to using one great big 24 volt battery like I'm about to do versus two 12 volts and chaining them together? Pros and cons. As I've shown in other videos, turning a, a two 12 volts into a 24 volt battery is really easy. You just take a little jumper wire like this and you jump the positive and the negative of the two batteries together. <laughs> So now I've got a 24 volt system here. So pretty straightforward. And also depending upon what's on sale at the time that you watch this video, it might be cheaper to have two 12 volt batteries to make a 24 versus one big 24 volt battery. And I'm okay with that. Here's kind of one of the downsides. You know, I've got a weak point right here of this wire that's joining. Um, there is a possibility that the batteries might get out of sync, uh, out of state of charge. You know, it's possible um, since they've got two separate BMSs. Also a weird little quirk, depending on how you're building your system, is you've got this weird little gap right here because the batteries are sort of V-shaped. So two 12 volt batteries might take up slightly more space than one singular 24 volt system. So if you're really, really, really space limited and you need that extra half an inch, something to kind of consider. And the 24 volt, uh, the new big 24 volt is in a metal case. It's like IP67 rated, so uh, more durable. Just kind of nice to have one singular unified system. I've made a half a dozen 24 volt systems by linking two 12s together. I don't have a big problem with that. So just kind of pros and cons. I'm going to use the big monster 24 volt for this build. The other big decision to make is what inverter and charger and solar charge controller and stuff you're going to use. And I really like unified systems. I Man, another video where I talk about all the parts and pieces that people don't think about. If you're going to have a separate charger, MPPT, and inverter you know, all put together, you've got a lot of connective tissue in between. And that wire and terminals and fuse blocks and bus bars and all that stuff really adds up. It makes the install really sloppy with a lot of failure points. So I really like having unified systems. So I considered first my Sun Gold Power 24 volt all-in-one. So this is an inverter charger 
doesn't have solar in it. It's just AC in, AC out. So this is a gr will give you a great big enormous UPS. This is a 3,000 watt nominal, 9,000 watt surge. And there's things that I like about it. The primary thing I like is that the battery terminals are very large and they're far apart. I find it ironic that you can see one of my dolly cart systems in the back. And as I mentioned, I've got a separate inverter and MPPT, you know, and a bunch of wires all connecting. Okay. So I'm going to use the lead time 24 volt all in one inverter charger MPPT. So this integrates those three pieces plus all the wiring into one box. So this makes this setup really, really, really simple and gives me all the features and functionality all in one box. So it's literally, you know, two wires from here to the battery. And then I'll show you how I set up the AC. There is one quirk with the lead time that had me kind of skeptical. And let me show you. These are the battery input terminals right here. And they're a little close together for my comfort. And they're a little small for my comfort. So if I was going to be pulling 3000 watts out of this, that would be about 150 amps at 24 volts, roughly. So I really should be using a two gauge or bigger to go into here. And that's what this recommends in the manual. This is a two gauge and a two gauge will not comfortably fit in here on its own. I mean, I just, I don't feel good about it. it ends up smushing the wire. So what manual tells you to do is use these little ferrules that look like banjo picks. So you take these ferrules, you put them on two gauge, you crimp them down, and then you put those in the trumpet and you screw them down. Now, I was not really comfortable with that. I just, it's an extra connection and there's gonna be a lot of current going through this. So if this comes loose and they short out, that could be a real bad day. So I didn't feel good about this. <laughs> So I'm going to use a four gauge because it fits in here nice and cleanly and tightens down real well. The reason why I'm okay doing that is because how I'm actually going to use this. I'm not running a well pump. I'm not going to run my air conditioner. This is to run my refrigerator, lights, fans, phones, electric blanket in the winter. So my actual total draw is pretty small, like under 1500 watts. So at 24 volts, I'm well within the range of what a four gauge would do. That's my comfort level. If you feel comfortable using a ferrule and going to a two gauge, that would be more recommended. I just didn't feel great about that. It's the call I made. So the rest of this thing is pretty easy. We've got AC in, AC out, and then solar input. So I've got an MC4 to wire pigtail, and then I'll take a extension cord or a power strip, cut it in half, wire each of these terminals, the uh, green, black, white, and then I just got to connect the battery to it. Like, this is really, really, really simple. So my 24 volt, 314 amp hour battery weighs like 130 some odd pounds and this lead time inverter weighs 50 something pounds. So I'm gonna put it on this uh, caterer's cart I got from Amazon, it was about 60 bucks. Um, as you can see back over in the corner, I do a lot of furniture dolly builds, but this thing is gonna be really, really, really heavy. And in my new house, I've got all these lips that I have to get over and I can barely do that. And my wife absolutely cannot do that on her own. So this gives me four wheels, you know, for stability to, to move this behemoth around because it's going to weigh almost 200 ish pounds when it's all done. So now we need to start to talk about wiring. So I showed earlier, we've got power in, power out, solar in, and then battery connections on the lead time. So let me show you how I'm going to do my power connections. So this is cool shop power supply. And just like I've done in 
other videos, I'm going to cut this cord, use the male end for the AC in and the power strip for the AC out. Big time caveat here. This is a 3000 watt inverter. This power strip is only rated to 1800 watts. So if I really, really, really wanted to pull more than 1800 watts out of this, I'd have to have two of these on top of each other on the same wires or a sub panel or something like that. So this in and of itself is not going to support the 3000 watts. For my needs, that is perfectly fine. Now I picked this power strip because it's metal and it's got these cool little mounting ears on the side. So I'm gonna lay it. There's just enough space right here uh, for next to the lead time that I can put big power bricks on top of this. I'll move this down just a little bit. We do have a vent fan right here. So I'm gonna show we've got good airflow and I'm gonna lead myself a long tail about like that and I'm gonna cut it. So now I need to strip back this jacket to expose the white, black, and green. Now the first block here, this is the input and then this is the output. So the power strip needs to go in this one over here. And make sure you twist these because you don't want a single one of these little strands to short to the other side. That would be very, very, very bad. Okay, so there is my AC output power strip. That wire is probably just a little long. I might trim that back later, but there it is. And I'll also bolt it down at the very end. So now I'll do the AC input. Okay, now very important. When you strip that outside jacket, you cannot cut the inside insulation, which I just did. So now I gotta cut this all off and start over because you don't wanna have any possibility of that shorting. So now that I've got everything in, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt the uh, inverter down so that way it doesn't slide around. I'm also gonna bolt down the power strip. And I'm gonna move this down just a little bit so that way it doesn't block these air vents. So the final piece of this is connecting the power wire to the battery. And I have a very weird problem here, which is that the negative and the positive terminals are on opposite sides of where they are on the inverter. So I'm gonna have to crisscross my wires, which I'm not a real excited about, but I don't have kind of a better solution. The other alternative would be to run really long wires all the way over and back and flip the battery around so they come up the other side. I'm not really crazy about that either. So this is the least bad of the two options, right? So I'm gonna get out my number four or my four gauge, measure it, and I'm gonna drill holes in the top of the cart so that way the wires can drop straight down and connect into the battery. While we're talking about wire, Windy Nation is the only way to go. Best wire out there. I'll put some links down there, down below, but don't buy cheap wire, not with the amount of current going through these things. Make absolutely certain you get every tiny little strand in that terminal or you're gonna have a real bad day. Pro tip, make sure you open the screw all the way up. So that's what it looks like. I probably could have moved these holes a little further out so that way the bend wasn't quite so tight. I think we'll be okay. But uh, if I were to do this again in the future, I would, I would move this out. Also, there's a honeycomb pattern underneath here. You can see kind of in the light this little grid to so make sure you don't try to drill into one of the supports. <laughs> So here's the power connections. 
one of the things I constantly get grief about is my lack of fuses on all of my builds. And I agree that they're important. The reason why I don't use them is I'm constantly ripping my stuff apart. And I also have never really found a fuse that I really like. A lot of people are using these little Bojack terminal fuses and they're great in theory. The one time I used this in a build, it got really, 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 really hot. And that made me very uncomfortable. So I haven't used one since. So I'm going to use a pop breaker like this uh, between the positive of the battery and the inverter. All right, let's take a look at how I'm going to do that. Okay, that's a 150 amp breaker. And I've got a little pigtail of four gauge. So I'm going to put a M8 ring terminal on my little jumper and then I'll insert my power wire uh, from the inverter into the other side and crank it down. I'm also gonna put heat shrink tubing uh, over these little Allen clamps to make sure it stays in. Okay, crimper tool. And I actually have to do this on the ground to get enough force on it. And this is a creme brulee blowtorch. There we go. Slide that in right there. Tighten that down with an Allen wrench. Okay. That's good and tight. And now I can put the wire from the inverter in here. And I also have to crimp the negative power terminal. Okay, so we're back here on the ground and I'm ready to start working on my final power connections. So I need to crimp my negative power wire. Or, so I would normally trim this back. I'm gonna leave it long so that way I can play around with it. And now you get to see how I crimp these connectors. There's one, there's two, give it a good yank, I know it's on there good. Okay, got that down good and tight. Put that little cover over it. That's cool. So now I am down to my positive. So there's a couple extra steps I need to take, and one of them is the pre-charge resistor. What it does do is it eliminates the spark when you touch the thing for the first time. Okay, that's down good and tight. And that is all it takes. You are now done. So you've got an 8,000 watt hour power station with a 3000 watt inverter, 40 amp AC charger, and a 50 amp MPPT solar charge controller all in one piece in this cool little cart you can move around. And grand total, this will cost you under $2,000. So compare $2,000 and 30 minutes worth of build to for an 8,000 watt power station versus an EcoFlow or a Jackery or something of an equivalent size. 8,000 watt hours, you know, as a fun little afternoon project. So I've got links down below with discount codes to lead time and to watt cycle. I'll list all the tools and wires and parts from Amazon that I use. So check it all out. Thanks. If you're not subscribed, give me a thumbs up and drop a comment down below and we'll catch you on the next one.